for watching so far. Next up, we have a very special guest. It's Sean Gleason, and he's here to share his very personal story. Hi, my name's Sean Gleason, and I'm an addict. I was asked to come here today. First, I'd first of all, I'd like to thank Lance, uh, Sheriff Hoffman, Kathy Wright, and uh, the members of the uh, Drug Free Coalition that have asked me to come and share my experience, strength, and hope. Um, I always like to start off by first thanking God for another day clean, another day alive. It is truly only through God's grace and mercy that I'm able to come here today clean, alive, and in my right mind and able to carry any kind of message. Um, this is a little different for me, speaking to a camera as opposed to people, so just bear with me and, and um, I'm going to try and share a little bit of my story, where I've been, where I'm at now, and my hope for the future. Um, I was born on Canal, I'm a lifelong resident. I was uh, born and raised in Malling Farms, a neighborhood on Canal Island. And I grew up in a relatively normal household. Uh, my parents taught me morals, values, instilled in me all the things that teach you right from wrong. Um, I was raised in a household with a, I was raised in a Catholic faith. Um, so at some point I was beginning to hang around people that were older than I was. Uh, I have older siblings. And back then, we're talking about, it was quite a while ago, the 1970s, it was a little bit different outlook on the way things were approached as far as children and being around uh, things of substances and natures, alcohol, things like, like that. It was semi-acceptable for a young uh, boy like myself to go get my father a beer, things, really simple things that didn't seem like a big deal at the time. Um, I don't think anybody would have foreseen what I ended up going through um, because I thought that that was acceptable behavior Everybody around me did that on a normal basis, so I thought that that was just the progression of things. I did end up starting a little bit earlier than most people or children would. I started, um, I think I took my first drink at around 10 or 11 years old, and I honestly believe that I was born with, the, uh, with addiction, with the genetic di uh, predisposition for obsessive and compulsive behavior, which led to um, one, the first time I tried a substance, it just continued to progress to the point where I was given the gift of desperation um, that I feel like by God to finally seek recovery from what I was suffering from. Um, I'm going to try and condense this. They've asked me to try and shorten it to about 15 minutes, which is a little difficult. There's a, a long time span in between. What I can say is that through all the trials and tribulations that, uh, that I went through with drug addiction, um, I was incarcerated multiple times, uh, multiple arrests. I was incapable of having any type of social acceptability, responsibility. Um, I was not a contributing member of society. And um, for me, it seemed like I would thought that there was something wrong with me. Um, and basically what I ended up finding out through the course of entering the, um, the process of recovery is that I don't have a moral deficiency. Um, I don't have a mental issue. It's a mental illness issue. It's basically a spiritual malady from which I suffer. And that it was a relief to know that all I needed to do was arrest my disease and I was able to move, move forward and change my life completely. Um, I don't like to focus on the years of, of using that I, that I went through. Um, I can tell you for qualification purposes that uh, I was arrested multiple times for DUIs. Um, I ended up um, using several what you would consider hard narcotics for a extended long periods of time, years, and um, which ended up taking me to a place where no one ever thought, including myself, that I would ever end up. Um, I. Uh, it's hard for me to try and explain because I feel like um, this is a public forum as opposed to uh, anonymous meetings where, that I normally attend. So I'm trying to semi-curtail my experience, strength, and hope. But <clears throat> I can tell you that for me, um, the disease of addiction completely and utterly destroyed my life. Um, every relationship that I ever had, it made me incapable of functioning in a normal society, and I had no idea how to go about changing that. Like I said, I thought that there was something wrong with me, that I, was, that I had a defect of character that was gonna cause me to continue to just go through this cycle of using, being arrested, being incarcerated, getting out and starting this whole process over. And I did that for many years. Um, <clears throat> I was introduced for the first time to a recovery fellowship in 2003. 
Um, so when I got there, I had no idea what recovery was about. All I knew was that I could not continue to live the way I was living one more day. Um, I went in, I was um, basically what it boils down to for me was that I had to, for the first time in my life, follow directions, take some simple suggestions, and uh, come to a, um, a basic understanding and acceptance of what that I had been going through that someone else had to identify for me because I wasn't sure exactly what it was that I was um, suffering from. Um, sometimes we get trapped in the illusion of a what if, if only in just one more time to the point where I thought that there was something out there that I was seeking all the time. Um, and basically what it boiled down to for me was it was a spiritual malady I was suffering from, a feeling inside of me. And this is why, the, because there is a, uh, there's a school of thought and argument of disease or choice, disease or choice. I like to separate the word dis-ease. It's the dis-ease, the, un, the restlessness of my spirit, that uneasy feeling inside me. It's like a gnawing inside that um, I always look for something to fill that with. And when I introduced a substance, it seemed like the answer. And it led to years and years of pain, suffering, dereliction, and uh, I, what I feel like now was unnecessary pain. Um, I can say for whatever reason, I feel like I've been given God's grace in perpetuity. Um, and maybe today is the reason why I went through some of the things that I had to go through. Um, I just hoped, I prayed on the way up here and I asked that if for no other reason that I came here today, that if I can reach anybody that is suffering anywhere near to the extent that I was, um, I just want to tell you there's hope. There's tons of people out there that are uh, willing and waiting for people to um, reach out and, you know, become willing to try and change their life. Um, the process of recovery is one that basically consists of three things that we consider indisp indispensable, which are honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. First, we have to become honest with ourselves, um, admit that there's a major uh, problem, and then become honest with another human being and tell them that I need help. Um, and if a strange thing happens when you ask for help, a lot of times you get it. Um, I was unaware of that. I was extremely, I had uh, self-centered fear so bad that, that held me back for years um, that I, I feel honestly that I went through a lot of unnecessary suffering. If I would have just probably raised my hand and said, hey, I'm going through this, I probably, you know, the outcome could have been different or a shorter period of time. Um, I'm not sure how to explain the transformation that my life's gone through since I decided to enter the process of recovery. Um, I, I belong to a fellowship that we believe in complete abstinence from all um, mind-changing, mood-altering substances. Um, and in that process, once you have that, what you get is a daily reprieve from, from uh, the suffering. We focus on the root cause of the spiritual malady. Um, there are some, some steps that are necessary. I can tell you that for this addict, I would have walked 20 miles to get one more and all they're asking me to do is take 12 easy steps um it's in comparison it's uh not not that tall of an order um some of the people that are on this board i actually know from different areas of my life of uh, lance is an old friend of mine and uh know him from his professional side as well um familiar with uh warden cook i was there several times through my addiction at the detention center um, Kathy Wright is a friend of mine, and again, I'd, I'd just like to thank everyone for stepping out on faith and asking uh, an addict to come up and share their experience, strength, and hopes, which shows that the county is willing to start moving in the direction of help and not, because for a long time this has been considered a, a crime or a, a moral deficiency, and when that what that does is drive an addict farther into isolation. Um, we need to open our arms and open our doors to the people that are in our community that are suffering from this. It's, I believe the treatment is the only way to move away from what we have now, which seems to be a, uh, I mean, locally an epidemic, um, and which is, seems to be, you know, nationwide. There are people that are available around the clock. 
Um, there are 1-800 numbers that are available that you can call if you have uh, that if yourself or a family member is suffering. Um, I'm sure if you contacted the coalition, those numbers are available. Um, I just wanted to uh, point out that in in this area, where it's called considered the east of the Bay Area, there are a lot of meetings available. There are tons of uh, information. Uh, the health department is not a bad place to, to go. Um, I just, you know, I can't express enough the the great the, the gratitude that I have for being asked to come here today. Um, that you know, God has shown fit to show me grace and mercy to get me to a point where I was even considered to come up here. Um, that's only due to the process of recovery. I can tell you that um, it wasn't that long ago um, that no one really wanted to hear what I had to say. Uh, <laughs> this is a trans a life transforming process. Um, I, I, you know, I can only speak for myself. I know that for me, I went from being in the tr front seat of my truck with not enough gas money to get to the top of the bridge to jump because I was afraid I'd run out and have to get out and run and it was pouring down rain. So I was sitting in my truck, destitute, phone cut off, nowhere to go. Um, not, I didn't feel like I had a friend in the world to call. And within a short period of time, I have my family back together. We're all under one roof. Um, we have a home. Um, I have a career. And basically, I feel that the only thing that I left to do, that I have left to do, is pay back something that has been so graciously given to me. And that's uh, to help another addict that may be still suffering. I, I just want you to know, if you're a family member, there are places for you to go. If you have a loved one that's suffering, if you're an addict and you see my face right now, please reach out. Um, there are people here that are willing to help. Um, most addicts will get in the car and go wherever you are or, and do whatever you need to do to try and get you into uh, a place where you're safe. I just want you to know that in the east of the Bay Area, you have a safe place to land. You can't come in and tell us anything that's going on with you that one of us has not either either been through, going through, or just got through. So basically what I'm asking you to do is um, take, take a leap of faith, um, give yourself a break, reach out, find the resources that are necessary in our community, and hopefully I'll see you soon and uh, we can start the process for you as well. Thank you.